Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be looking at an economic concept that is used quite literally in everyday life by every single individual on this planet. No seriously, economics can actually be applied in everyday life, I promise. Everyone from the multi-billionaires to the humble minimum wage employees to the newborn infant born, well, five seconds ago, and to a person who's found themselves lost in the desert with no food or water. When I say everyone uses this, I mean everyone. Don't believe me? Well, I'll explain how each of these individuals use the concept at the end of the video, so stay tuned for it. The concept is known as diminishing marginal utility. And with that said, let's get right into it. So if you study economics or have a general interest in the field, then you should know what utility is. If you don't, don't worry, I've got you covered. Utility is essentially the happiness or satisfaction that you get from consuming something. When we choose to purchase goods or services, we receive some sort of benefit from them. After all, if we didn't, then why would we be buying them? Now, there are things that we involuntarily consume which take away utility or bring us something called disutility, such as air pollution that we tend to breathe every day, but that's a topic for another time. For this specific video, we'll be using an example which focuses on a good that brings many, many people utility utility and that is pizza. Now for all you pizza haters out there, don't apologize, I, I apologize. Due to the differences in consumer taste, a product that pleases everyone and offers positive utility to everyone is quite simply non-existent. But pizza is as close as we're gonna get. With that said, let's dive into a real example. Now it's worth noting that this example is based on a true story and to protect the identity of the main protagonist in this example, names have been changed and pizza consumption and associated utility have been adjusted. So. We have a man, let's call him Jeff. My name is Jeff. And Jeff is hungry. Want to know something else about Jeff? Well, he loves pizza. So he does what any rational consumer would do. He orders a pizza. Once he gets his pizza, he opens the box to reveal one of the most beautiful Domino's pizzas he's laid eyes on. And then he proceeds to eat his first slice. Now this first slice of pizza definitely gives Jeff satisfaction. Well, how much satisfaction? 30 utils. And now I know what you're thinking, whoa, 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 utils, really man, you've got to be making this up. And to you, I say, nope, a unit of utility is known as a util. They come from something known as an individual's utility function. Every individual has different preferences and therefore one's utility can only be compared to the same person's utility for something else. So you cannot compare Jeff's 30 utils for his first slice of pizza to my 15 utils for my first slice and then derive that Jeff likes pizza more than me. You can't do that. But what you can do is compare Jeff's 30 utils he receives from his first slice of pizza to his two utils he receives from a stalk of asparagus and derive that he likes pizza way more than asparagus. Utility is tied to the individual and therefore can only be compared with the same individual. Sound a little confusing? Well, if you want a video dedicated to consumer theory, utility theory specifically, then let us know in the comments and I'll make it happen. Anyways, where were we? Oh yes, so Jeff received 30 utils for that delicious first slice of pizza. But you know what's better than the first slice? The second slice of pizza. So Jeff has another one. After consuming the second slice, his utility is now 65 utils. And anyone who's ordered an entire pizza for themselves knows how slippery the slope gets. But when you're hungry, your eyes are much bigger than your stomach. So Jeff has another one. Now his total utility is 79 utils. By now he's sitting on the couch, building his ultimate team on FIFA 23. And then you guessed it, he has another one. The fourth slice brings him up to 90 utils. So you've eaten half the pizza. Who's gonna stop you now? Another one. He's consumed his fifth slice, bringing him to a total utility of 100 utils. Now here's where things get interesting. So once you've had five slices of pizza, you might as well have a sixth, right? Wrong! But no one told Jeff, so he grabs that cheesy slice of heaven and eats it. But look at his total utility. It's back down to 90. How is this possible? Well, anyone who's walked the walk and talked the talk knows that eating six slices of pizza isn't always the best decision for something with limited capacity such as one's stomach. So here Jeff sits, bloated on the greasy wheel, wishing he'd never had that sixth slice. He's more stuffed than Pizza Hut's original stuffed crust pizza. Well, let's look at our table, which has the number of slices Jeff consumes on the left and his utility on the right. For those of you who are visual learners, don't worry, I've got you. One slice of pizza represents, well, one slice of pizza. And one happy face represents 10 utils because utility is satisfaction received from consuming a good and pizza makes Jeff happy. Each additional slice up to slice number five adds to Jeff's total utility. Well, what about marginal utility? 
Well, we define marginal utility as the increase in total utility from consuming one more good. So let's add a column to this table, which includes the marginal utilities, shall we? Now, if you aren't sure how to calculate marginal utility from the first two columns, don't worry, it's easy. If the quantity goes up by one each time, which in this example it does, then it's even easier. As we go from zero slices to one slice, we gain 30 utils. As we go from one slice to two slices, Jeff gains 35 utils. Well, how do we calculate that? Well, you simply take the difference between your current total utility and the utility you had before consuming one more unit of the good. So 30 minus zero is 30. 65 minus 30 is 35. 79 minus 65 is 14. 90 minus 79 is 11. 100 minus 90 is 10. And finally, 90 minus 100 is negative 10. So now that we have all of the marginal utilities in the table, it's easy to see that after his second slice, Jeff's marginal utility begins to decline. We call this diminishing marginal utility, and this happens because the value he receives from the first slice of pizza is high, because he's so hungry. For the second slice, it's even higher since he loves pizza and he was, well, hungry. But as he continues to eat another slice, each additional slice doesn't bring him the same satisfaction as the previous slice. Eventually, he gets too full from eating additional slices that it actually makes him worse off. We see this happen after the sixth slice. So in this case, we can see that his optimal consumption to maximize his total utility is at five slices. Now, some of you math-loving people might be looking at this thinking to yourselves, well, it looks like marginal utility is simply the slope of the total utility function. And you'd be correct. This means that total utility is maximized when marginal utility is equal to zero. Now, as I promised at the beginning of the video, I'll explain how everyone from multi-billionaires to humble minimum wage employees to the newborn infant born five seconds ago to the person who's found themselves lost in the desert with no food or water experienced diminishing marginal utility. Starting us off with Elon Musk. When he made his first million, it's safe to assume that he must have been ecstatic. And then came his second million and then his 10th million, and then his 100th million, and so on and so forth. And now the value that Musk places on $1 million, that is, the utility he receives from earning it, is nowhere near the utility he received back when he made his first million. That's diminishing marginal utility. Well, what about the humble minimum wage employee? Well, we already went over an example, Jeff. Jeff was the minimum wage employee. What about the five second old infant? Well, if you stuck around since the beginning of the video, that infant is now a few minutes old, no longer five seconds, but they will still experience diminishing marginal utility. When a baby is born, it needs to be wrapped in warmth. The initial warmth the baby receives increases the baby's total utility, but too much warmth or heat is not good, and so the total utility will begin to fall after the optimal level. Speaking of too much heat, how about Buddy who got lost in the desert? Well, I'm sure he'd appreciate some water, right? That first sip must feel amazing on his parched lips, but give a man a bottle of water he drinks for a few seconds. Give a man too much water and he develops hydrophobia. Somewhere in between those two extremes is the ideal amount of water that maximizes our lost traveler's total utility. So there you have it. Now we've covered diminishing marginal utility. If you want to see more videos on utility theory, let us know. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.